Hi everyone, it's Miriam Ortiz Pino with More Than Organized here. Uh, I'm a certified professional organizer and simplicity expert and we're trying something just a little bit new today. I'm trying out the new start screen. So um, I just wanted to put that up there for a second while people start joining and we will get um, into the topic of the day which is gonna be sorting and categorizing. So let's see how this works. Let's pull this up. How you doing? All right. Um, hopefully people are starting to join now. And just so you know, when I'm looking around the room a little bit in the beginning of these videos, it's because I have a bunch of technology happening. I have the video stuff to do the live here, but I also, as you can see, have my phone hooked up here and I've got some stuff to display to um, remind me down here some notes of what I'm gonna be telling you guys about. Um, I like to work off the cuff, but I like to follow some sort of outline as well. It just keeps us moving forward and um, connecting a little bit better. So uh, what I wanted to talk to you about today, I also have my props hanging out. So we have props. Um, today I wanna talk about sorting because I found as I work with my clients, that sometimes it's hard to know what, how to sort the best way. What's gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck? Is it gonna be sorting by size or shape or color or frequency of use? There's a lot of different ways you can go. So I just wanted to, to talk you through how to think for yourself, which way is gonna work best for you. Um, now, uh, there's several blog posts on my site over at morethanorganized.net you can uh, slash blog, you can go over there and, and do a search and, and find things on clutter control and sorting and rearranging. There's some good information there, as well as on the homepage at morethanorganized.net. There's a free three-part quick start course that you can uh, take a look at to get you started. It's probably the fastest way to get into the stuff I'm talking about. Um, all right, so let's talk about Sorting. Uh, I wanted to use something that's very kind of universal in terms of it shows up in many people's houses and offices and it's uh, just kind of a relatable grouping of things. So we're going to talk about uh, sorting pencils and crayons and markers. So various kinds of pens and art medium. Uh, I work with a lot of people in their craft rooms or their kids art stuff and it works in all of these different areas because it's all about how you think about things. And for someone that has a lot of um, a lot of different mediums, uh, pencils, markers, crayons, pastels, paints, that kind of thing, it's probably best to go ahead and think by medium and then subsort from there. For someone that doesn't have a lot, it might make sense to do by color. I barely have any markers, um, and the few that I do tend to be used in office type settings, like my Sharpies for labeling and my highlighters for highlighting stuff. So it might make more sense for me to have it by color or by size, because I need my fat Sharpie and my thin Sharpie for different kinds of lettering. But think through how you would do it, and then just practice sorting. So all of this stuff can work in other areas as well your closets. Do you want to sort by color or by sleeve length first? Do you want to sort by work clothes and casual clothes? Think it through ahead of time. How does your brain process it? Some people in the kitchen think baking spices and savory spices. Some just think spices. So knowing how your brain looks for things first is going to help you sort that out. Um, and then it'll inform how you want to do some sort of uh, containerizing of the stuff you're sorting after the fact. But gathering like things together is the first step of organizing, right? Gather like things together. And if you're working from, say, a pen cup, my pencil cup happens to be a, a tin flower pot, um, but if you put anything, you know, your pens for your desk in here, I have a few markers, I have a few um, sizes, but then what do you do with the rest? I have all these other ones too. So you wanna be thinking through how you're gonna save things, how you're gonna store them, 
why you have them in the first place, how you use them, and how your brain actually works. I like having just one of everything that I use regularly in my pencil cup. But in the background, I have other things that I use for special occasions, like crayons for when my niece and nephew come over. I happen to have a brand new set to do this video so they look prettier, but you get the idea. I have crayons and I could use those all in one place. So I'm just gonna set crayons to the side. Let me just put this down a little bit so we can see as well. I'm getting the hang of, of the, the, uh, the um, technology here. So we've got crayons coming out of, let's say this was a junk drawer. We have crayons coming out, arriving out of here. I have pencils. So there's some colored pencils. I use those for when I do sketching and, and on my vision board and uh, when I'm kind of outlining projects. Sometimes I like to do it colorful, just Gantt charts with color um, keeps my projects moving forward. So that's one way of sorting. There's crayons or shorter, fatter items and long skinny items by color. And then within the color, you could do it rainbow-like. So you could go white, black, and then, and then there's yellow, orange, red, green, blue, purple. Oh, another shade of green. Oh, another shade of purple. See how that starts to work out? Um, same thing here. We can go rainbow color if we want to with the crayons. Maybe. What do you think? Um, various ways of doing that. And then you have these extra things. Well, I have highlighters, so that's another grouping. I could do it all by highlighters. And within that, look, I have two different styles of blue highlighters, so they can go next to each other, and then I can pick blue from there. Um, then we have random markers. So I have a real fat Sharpie. I always have one fat Sharpie. I have my regular Sharpies, but I have black and red because I use them for two different tasks. And I have a, a um, it's actually ultra fine point, uh, is good for, for file labels. And I have this other brand, but I like this color of burgundy red for a certain thing I do with my money tracking. So I need one of each of these in my pencil cup because that's how I use my pencil cup. Now, we just saw that I already have an ultra fine in there. So this one can go back to my drawer and I already have a red in the pencil cup as well. So I can put this one back in the drawer. But these actually came out of here. So I'm putting those back into the pencil cup. But the leftovers can go with my other markers and extra highlighters. I don't have very many, so I keep mine together. And those go into my backup drawer. I have it right over here in uh, a set of thin drawers that I have on the side of my desk, and they're all labeled. And one is for my backup pens and the overstock, the extras, the ones that came in a box, because they're extra. So that red Sharpie can go right back in the box, because it was from there for the, the demonstration. But now it lives with the other red Sharpies and the red Sharpies live with the other black Sharpies and the other highlighters and the extra um, pens, which mostly are in boxes, but all the boxes are in one drawer right there. Okay, so then we're gonna look back and I've got the handful of highlighters that I use regularly. Those are going back in the pencil cup because that's where they go. And the backup is in the box in the drawer. Now, because I use color pencils just for my special projects and my uh, vision board and stuff, I go ahead and put them back in their original container, which is just a clear plastic box in my case, but you might have a tin or, or something. Or if you're an artist and you have a lot of different color pencils, they can go in, um, I like using mugs, my favorite mugs or glasses, highball glasses, something fun that holds them upright where you can just reach and grab them. Um, those are a special project for me though, so they go into a special spot. 
I can also use those while my niece and nephew are here in conjunction with their crayons. So if we're all working on some art, we can pull out several mediums, but they're all kind of contained and I keep them in the same place because they're special projects. So the crayons go back in the crayon box. How about that? If you have a lot of crayons, a lot of kids, you can just get a shoe box or a container or again, some sort of a jar situation, little box, but you want to have it be the crayon box. If you are extra crazy with your crayons or do something special with crayons, like those shave the crayons and, and iron them between wax paper style art or batiking of some sort and you need certain colors or, or sizes and shapes, you can do more um, breakdown of the categorization of, of the crayons, like several sizes of crayons in of all the same color in one spot, if that works better for you. The bottom line is it doesn't matter how you sort. The, what matters is that you're consistent with how you think and sorting in that form. So hope that helps. Um, let's see, I wanna just double check and see if there's any questions that have arrived um, on the Facebook. And again, I'm just looking over here at my phone because we can't, Technology, you have things happening in many different places. Let's see. Any questions? Oh, sorry. It's uh, now I hit the thing and now we hear it. All right. We are live, but no questions. Well, if you end up with some questions, feel free to post them. I will keep an eye on uh, the feed throughout the day and be happy to hop back on and, and answer any questions. If you have a topic that you'd like to share with me, feel free to go to morethanorganized.net slash contact um, and send me uh, an idea or post it right here on the Facebook page. Every Monday around 11 a.m. Mountain Time, I'll be uh, putting a video up and, and seeing what kinds of conversations we can get going about organizing and simplifying your life. That's my goal. Make it as easy as possible for you. All right, one last check. See if any questions came in. And I am not seeing them, but one, hang on one second. We have the one last check. Ah, uh, here we go. Well, that's weird. It sent me to a weird, weird thing. All right, who wants this? Slow when I'm streaming. Everything is slow and adjusting itself. All right, I think that's probably it. I'm not seeing a question right now. So I do see some people joined me though. Thank you for showing up and I will see you again next Monday. Let's try one more time with this transition. Get the new stuff down. All right. Thanks, everyone.